Okay, hi, welcome back to my stream. This is uh, day 30 of walking my way through the uh, roguelike tutorial in Rust. I have gotten pretty far so far. We've finished section one, which is called Hello Rust, and it gets us a basic game with dungeon levels and monsters and things like that, but a limited number of each. And we've been working along here through the stretch goals. So looking at um, nicer looking walls. So instead of just hash, hash marks and dots, we're actually getting fancy kind of shapes of walls with the uh, code page 437 graphics. Uh, we added bloodstains. Do I have an example of bloodstains? Yeah, there's a bloodstain there. So it just changes the background to red whenever there's a bloodstain on that square. We have particle effects, which means we can see when a monster attacks you or you attack a monster. If I if I zoom in to this massively and I go over to the uh, goblin, as soon as I reach this square, you should see a little attack from the goblin. You can see that real quick, and then I can hit back, and you can see. So that those are what are being called particle effects. Let me zoom that in a couple levels. There we go. And then uh, we finished, uh, oh, we, we're about to start uh, the, on the hunger clock, which hopefully will uh, not make the game too too hard, right? Because hunger clock just you know, means we're asking you to perform a specific task in within a specific amount of time. And if you don't, then you die <clears throat> or take damage or whatever, right? Um, and that could be either annoying or a tactical complexity that makes the game interesting. So we'll start by adding a hunger clock. Uh, we'll be adding a hunger clock to the players. The first step is to make a component to represent it. They explain why. Yeah, yeah, they are a controversial feature. Okay. Yeah, you can irritate the player if you're spending a lot of time for food, but they also for force you to keep moving forward so you don't sit around without exploring more right resting to heal becomes more of a risk reward system right so as you heal you're using up your food makes sense but it is the gameplay worth the uh, counterbalancing annoyance in having to go hunt for food all the time uh, we'll be adding a hunger clock to the player so the first step is to make a component to represent it in components. All right, um, let's just add a component and it is an enum. So we'll just copy this enum here, pub enum hunger state. We have well fed, normal, hungry, and we have starving, okay. Right, and then we have a hunger clock and I'm gonna use the convert save load macro since we're allowed to use that when there are struct elements. Right, pub state, hunger state, which is the enum we just created and duration of I32. All right. As with all components, it needs to be registered in main and save load system. Okay, so hunger state and hunger clock. Oh, hunger state is not a component. So we just have to re uh, register hunger clock. Right, and put it in the save load system. Hunger clock here. Source lib save load. And we'll do that here. Hunger clock, right? And go down to here and do it for loading as well. Okay. Then we'll extend the player function to add a hunger clock to the player. I haven't set up uh, NeoVim yet, but I've been playing with it, so now it's in my um, it's in my muscle memory. Uh, where is player? Where do we spawn the player? 
Oh, it's in spawners? Here it is, player. Okay, so it's a player and he or she has a hunger clock. Right there, that's the only change, right? With hunger clock, state, hunger state, well fed, and duration of 20. Um, and we're doing crate. Okay, so we have to add hunger state and hunger clock. There. And there's now a hunger component in place, but it doesn't do anything. But it should build, right? Nope. Oh, I put a capital S for state. Okay, so this is in spawner. Right? Okay. And then adding the actual hunger system. So we're going to create a new file called hunger system. And it's going to implement. Wow. Okay. Some of this is copy paste, so it shouldn't take as long as it looks. Specs. Oops. Prelude star. State, hunger, state, suffer, damage, and the game log. And here's our hunger system. And we're going to implement, okay, we're going to do a type compl type complexity avoidance maneuver here. Hunger data. And this gets entities. hunger clock component the entity resource which is as this comment says the player the run state resource and we're just reading it the damage components and the game log resource. All right, and then we're gonna implement a system for our hunger system. And type system data equals hunger data using that lifetime. Okay, run. I should set up a little shortcut for this line because every system has the same line. Okay, so then we destructure. Assume that says game log, although it's off the screen. And then we're going to loop over every entity with a hunger clock. Join those. And what? We have a proceed flag. And what's that going to do? It's saying whether or not we're going to proceed. So if run state is run state player turn and if entity is the player entity proceed equals true. So we're going to refactor this a little bit. We're going to match on the run state this way, and then we're going to return entity is player entity, right? And run state monster turn entity 
not equal to player entity. Otherwise, by default, it's false. Right? So this is doing this in uh, slightly fewer lines, or we'll assign, and we don't need to make proceed mutable anymore. So it's saying if the run state is player turn and the entity we're dealing with that has the hunger clock is a player entity, then we're going to proceed. If it's a monster's turn and the entity is not the player entity, which must be a monster, right? Then uh, we're going to proceed. Otherwise, we will not proceed. All right. And then we're going to look here. We're going to tick down on the clock duration. Clock duration gets subtracted. If the clock duration is less than one, then we're going to match on the clock state. And we're going to either do, or we're going to just move the thing along from well fed to normal, normal goes to hungry, hungry goes to starving, and starving inflicts damage. Okay. So we're going to match on the state. Hunger state, well fed, clock state, goes down to normal, duration is set to 200. If we're dealing with the player entity, we're going to enter an entry into the game log. It's hard to type and talk. You are no longer well fed unless you're <laughs> talking the same thing you're typing to string. Nothing special there. And that's the end of that one, right? Although there's two here and I just put three. Oh, because I did the match. Okay, so then this, let's just repeat this three times and then we'll just modify things. Normal goes to hungry and then this changes to hungry. Then hungry goes to starving and then this is changes to starving, although there's an exclamation point on that one. And then starving, we don't change the hunger state, we don't set a duration. And then you, we just say your hunger pangs are getting painful. And then we enter a suffer damage component on the inflict damage, one point of damage. And that goes on this inflict damage, and the inflict damage is the suffer damage component. Where did we put it? Oh, we're putting it on this entity here. OK. All right, and that's the end of that, and that's the end of that, and that's the end of that. Right? Oops, come on. There, OK. So that wasn't too bad. So it works by iterating all entities that have a hunger clock. If they are the player, it only takes effect in player turn state. Likewise, if they're a monster, it only takes place in their turn, in which case we want hungry, hungry monsters later. Oh, in case we want hungry monsters later. OK. Why'd that jump? Jump back. OK. Uh, the duration of the current state is reduced on each run through. If it hits zero, it moves one state down, or if you are starving, it damages you. And now we need to add it to our list of systems. Yep. And that is down here in our list of systems. And they've got it just before the particle spawn system. So let's put it in the same spot. Oh, and Togglebit is live. OK. Uh, let, let me just see. I'm just going to refresh.
Yep. Um, so mute hunger, hunger system, hunger system. Uh, and then we're going to hunger run now self ECS. Okay. So now we should be able to refresh and be hungry. Although I guess we just have to sit here and I'll, I'll hold down the space bar and see what happens. Um, after what, 200 turns, I should say I'm no longer well fed. Right? Oh, I didn't rebuild. Huh. Jumping the gun here. Yeah. Okay. So what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't import hunger system. Okay. So that's in, yeah, that's in game state. Um, oh, it's part of the crate. Okay. Source lib mod. Yeah. So pub mod hunger system pub use hunger system like that and everything blows up okay oh we have to add run state so why wasn't that that wasn't part of the thing or I missed it right or they did a use star no run state's right there Use of undeclared creator module hunger system. Oh, not self ECS, mute ECS. Right? Yeah. Oh, self dot ECS. That was the problem. But that doesn't fix any of the hunger system bugs. Right? I did a join on. I got an overflow requirement. All right, well, let's rebuild with that change in place. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not finding re oh, run state. Oh, okay, yeah, that's why. So if we look at hunger system, I typo this, and that's the bug right there. Is that the source of all the bugs, or are there others? There's others. Oh, right, because game log. I didn't do game log. Log, 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 log. Let's fix all the logs, and then there's inflict damage. Oh, typo there. Okay. Um, let's look for log. Oh, let's just change this to log, right? And then look for the typo here, inflict D-A-M-A-G-E. And we got a problem with monster turn, right? Line 25. Let's build that. Okay. So now, um, if I go over here and hit refresh, begin a new game, and now I'll hit hold on the space bar. Yep, there he goes. Okay, so it's, now it says you are no longer well fed. And if I continue holding on the space bar for a long time, for a very long time, you are hungry. There we go. Okay, so that's working. Let's check that in. Uh, first, we check in with Clippy. Clippy's happy, then what we do? Um, git status, git add source, git commit dash m added a hunger system. Good. Okay. And now, displaying the status. It would be nice to know your hunger state. We'll modify draw UI and GUI to show it. Okay. So we'll pull up GUI, look for draw UI, 
right there. And we've got combat stats, players, and now we have hunger. ACS read storage, hunger clock. Okay. And then we'll add HC hunger. And the way, the reason this is okay to do is because the player does have a hunger and we're only printing out the player's information. All right, so print color this, draw bar horizontal that, and now we're going to add match HC state. Hunger state well fed CTX print color. 7142 and then it's going to be green and black I'm going to hmm, I did that before but I don't know if it's worth it uh, RGB named RLTK green I was going to put them in separate variables and then So we are grabbing them each time, might as well, right? Let white equals RGB named white. Let black equals RGB named black. And then we also have red. And green, do I pull in? I don't pull in green. What other colors don't I pull in? We have green, orange, there's no orange. And then red is over here, okay. So what were, we, what were we doing? I lost my place already, okay, there we are. Um, so we need red, green, orange, and yellow. So we got red, so green, orange, and yellow. Let's just make, just make the code a little easier to read. Because then we just go like this, white and black. And this changes to yellow and black. This changes to red and black. We might be able to fit on one line now. So then this is green and black, and we're just gonna put the text well fed, comma, hunger state normal, uh, gets nothing, hunger state hungry, and then we'll just grab this and change it to orange and the text will be hungry, right? And then we'll change this to starving. And instead of orange, it's gonna be red. And this will be starving, right? Close the match. That should clean that up. And now it looks like the text is going right up here. So let's see if that builds. It does not. Oh, probably because I forgot to import um, hunger, right? Hunger clock. And hunger state. Okay, now let's see. If I refresh, we should see well fed over here. Indeed, and now if I hold, and it's in green, if I hold the space bar down, it disappears. And if I hold the space bar down for a long time, it should switch to 
because we're not right now in the normal state so we should see hungry in orange after a little bit of time here there it is okay so that's all working I'm not I haven't tested out taking damage from it maybe I'll do that now all right holding down the spacebar again or maybe I can explore right while I'm exploring I should um, go get a shield so I don't take damage is that a shield it is So now we're wielding a dagger and shield. There's some blood stains over there. If I hit the space bar, even though I'm hungry, oh, they're starving. I can still heal up when I'm starving. I wonder if that's going to uh, change. Um, but now at some point I should be able to start taking damage. Right? find the stairs down over here and I'm not I'm trying to be careful there it goes your hunger pangs are getting painful so now you can see it's going down if I hit spacebar oh yeah if I hit spacebar I heal one and and the hunger causes me to take damage so I can sit here and deafen oh look at that i'm also leaving a trail of blood <laughs> as i starve to death <laughs> that's really funny okay that is the hunger clock um let us check that in commit gym. oh get we didn't clippy let's clippy it first and format get diff so all we did was add in a little indicator here and I didn't I didn't show this one adding a hunger system Just, oh, get show this I guess I could have just said head right um, so this is the hunger clock and hunger state this is the, running the hunger system this is the hunger system and then we added a hunger clock to the player so pretty straightforward and then get commit gem show hunger indication on GUI all right so now let's add in some food it's all well and good starving to death but players will find it frustrating if they always start to start to die after 620 turns uh, we have most of the components we need for this already introducing a new item called rations um, we will add a uh, food provides food component okay and it doesn't have any it doesn't have any um, things just like blocks tile okay so let's just grab that one and pubstruct provides food just like that and then in spawner we're going to create rations um, where should we put it it's a monster here's dagger let's put it just above the dagger here actually we can just copy the dagger and just edit right rations create entity position xy renderable gets a percent color is green render order is still two the name is rations it is an item it is not equipable but it provides food uh, it doesn't give a melee power bonus but it is consumable and it does have the simple marker and then we're going to have to add this to main okay th 
that. And let me just copy that text and we can edit the save load system. Go to the hunger clock on the load and put it there. Oh, train's coming by. Okay, so, and in the room table, we will add rations with a spawn rate of 10, whatever 10 is. And in the spawn code, um, we will add rations there as well. That's why. Boy, it'd be nice to do this a better way. It feels like there should be a better way. All right, and if you cargo run now, you can counter rations that you can pick up and drop. You can't, however, eat them. We'll add that to the inventory system. Um, okay, let's see if this builds. It doesn't because I forgot to add, provides food, to this giant list of crate imports. It built. Okay, so we should be able to see food spawn now. You can pick up a shield. Oh, yeah. Now we'll wander around. I forgot to add it to my uh, goodies spawner so that they could spawn in the first room. Should we do that? Oh, no. There we go. Look at that. Oh, I died. I forgot to. Um, anyway, the, the food was there. We couldn't pick it up, but we did see it briefly. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so let's add this code here to the um, inventory system. That's it. So let's see, where should we put it? We're getting a target, so it has to be after the target in the inventory system. Right? There's the healer. For provides healing. So let's just put it after that. And let's just use the same pattern we have here. Item add. Yeah, we don't actually use. We don't actually use it, right? It just says if item edible match it. If it's sum, then we set used item to true, which I've which I didn't do. I left that used item thing out because uh, it wasn't doing anything. And then that we grab the hunger clock this way. So we don't need to if let, we just need to say provides food, get, use, item, item is sum, right? Then we say let target equals targets zero. Then we're gonna grab the hunger clock if let sum hunger clock equals hunger clocks which we'll have to add, right? Get mute target, then HG state hunger. We're gonna go directly to well fed rather than moving up one level at a time, I guess. Duration is 20 and game log, which we already have entries, push format. You eat the rations names dot get use item dot item unwrap i think it's name name after that no it's just name one name name okay so that's that and we just go up here we have to add hunger clocks and provides food to our giant list of retrievables right and we don't need to modify provides food so that's read storage And we do need to modify the hunger clocks. So that's right storage, hunger clock. And we need to add that down here to our destructure. Provides food and mutable hunger clock it's with an S. Okay. And then adding a bonus. Okay, so let's see if this works. Nope. Oh, because I didn't. 
Ah, I was trying to be careful. And I forgot to edit here. So provides food and hunger clock. And hunger state. All right, this should build. So now we should be able to eat food. Um, is it worth adding? I think it's worth adding to our goodies spawn, which is it's just something I added outside of the um, normal spawn stuff, just so the first room has a bunch of stuff we can use for testing makes testing easier and then we have to increment that to seven let's build that and refresh on that yeah okay so there's some food let's pick up the food and some magic missile scroll here's the shield so let's wield the shield so i don't die from goblin attacks and then what i'm going to do okay so the well-fed you are no longer well-fed i should be able to eat the rations you eat the rations and now i'm well fed okay so that works let's see if clippy's happy clippy's happy uh and what did we do so we added a provides food component oh i added an extra comma there that cargo format cleaned up for me um and then in in our inventory system we added code that allows us to eat the food and hopefully the disappeared yeah because it was consumable all right and then in our spawner we added um something for the first room and we added the rations okay added rations that's it that's good enough actually i've, I've been forgetting to push this haven't i There we go. Okay. And then we're almost done with this chapter. So we're going to add a bonus for being well fed. All right. It would be nice if being well fed does something. We'll give you a temporary plus one to your power when you are fed. And this encourages the player to eat, even though they don't have to. Sneakily making it harder to survive on lower levels as food becomes less plentiful. So in our melee combat system, we're going to need a hunger clock. And a hunger state, right? And then we're going to look somewhere. Where do you think this goes? So it must be just before we calculate the offensive bonus, right? Here's the offensive bonus that gets calculated here. Right, and then what we can do is just add it here, right? And H D equals hunger clock get entity if let some H C if let some H C equals hunger clock get entity if H C state is hunger state well fed then offensive bonus plus equals one right and we need hunger clock to be part of this thing R right storage right because we're going to modify it hunger clock and then we add hunger clock here like that and that's it does that compile and then we'll do the preventing healing when you're hungry or starving and wrap things up okay so i don't think i need to test that because it's going to be hard to test because I'd need a, right now I'm well fed, right? Oh, there. So player hits goblin for five HP, right? 
because we are well fed. If I rest, I only get four HP out of it. Wow, we got really lucky being able to find a goblin right away. There we go. So now, yeah, now I'm only hitting for four because I'm no longer well fed. If I eat the rations, I'm well fed and I hit for five right there. Okay, so that's working. Um, Clippy shouldn't complain. We didn't do much. And that's all we did was add this little check here. So let's get add source, get commit combat bonus for being well fed. And then we will go over to this preventing healing when hungry or starving. And then we're all done for the day till tomorrow. Skip turn. So this is in skip turn. Where the hell skip turn? There it is. Um, boom. So, okay, so this is just above this if here, which is this if here. So we're going to grab the hunger clocks from storage. We're going to see if there is a hunger clock on the player, which there is. And then we'll set can heal to false if hungry or starving. Um, I'm going to do it slightly differently, I think. Hunger clocks equals ECS read storage. Hunger clock. Uh, if let some HC hunger clocks get player entity. Okay, so HC now has a state. So we can say can heal is equal to can heal. And, right, the hunger state is not hungry and the hunger state is not starving. Right, because that'll, that'll flip it to false. If can heal is true, then we'll check these. If can heal is false, then we'll just drop out. HC not equal to hunger state hungry and HC is not equal to hunger state starving. Okay, I think that's right. Sometimes Boolean logic escapes me. Um, but I think this, this saying is a hunger state is hungry. This is going to be false. So the whole thing becomes false. The parentheses here don't really matter, but it helps to group, visually helps to group what's going on. So if can heal is false, we're going to skip down here anyway and not do any healing. And can heal gets set to false up here. If can heal is true and we are hungry, that's going to be false. So the whole thing is false. Or if we're starving, that's going to be false. Okay. So hopefully that works. Unfortunately, it takes a while to get to the hungry or starving. Oh, we can't compare things like that. Oh, that's why probably why they did a match, right? Oh, HC state. Nope. My mistake. 119. State. State. And that takes it to be a little bit too long. That's all right. All right. So, so right now we can rest and get well fed and uh, sorry, and get um, healing done if there's no monsters visible. So if I hide from the monster, I can heal, right? If I see the monster, then I can't heal. All right, so now if I go to um, so right now I'm in the normal state, so I can heal. So I'm going to do is go to hungry and find a monster to fight, hopefully before I die. Problem is, if I eat rations, it's going to take me all the way back up to well fed. I shouldn't have healed after that last battle, huh? Uh, all I want to do is test this. There we go. Okay, so now we're hungry. I'm going to hide from the monster. Fortunately, there's that bug where it can't go around the corner. And if I hit space, I am not healing. 
All right, but if I eat, oh, I forgot to pick up rations. Where were the rations? Maybe in the first room? Yeah, over here. If I eat, well fed, now I have had space, I can heal up. Okay, all right, that's working. And that takes us to the end of the whole hunger clock section. We did that in 45 minutes. Nice. Um, and this is all we did for this last bit. Add source, get commit, fm, if hungry or starving, don't heal when resting. Good. Um, here is my commits. All right, so then tomorrow we will start looking at adding a magic map component. Okay, so there's only one of us, two of us, you and me. I will we'll switch over to Togglebit since he's um, a lot more entertaining than I am. But thanks for watching. I uh, hope you had a good time. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care.